like an exhibition match. You guys seem to be going at it pretty tough there. Um, I felt like, I mean, it felt like an exhibition. I definitely drop shot it more. I tried an underhand serve, and it didn't really work. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. To play in front of all of your fans who have pretty much watched you grow up. Yeah, it feels great um, to play in front of my family and friends who haven't gotten to see me play um, live and at any time in my life. And also, the, I guess, the city of Delray, they've really been supporting me um, really since the beginning. So it was good to kind of um, get give them the chance to see me um, play because I guess the closest tournament to them is Miami. Um, that's the closest to home for me. Coco, you have this huge crowd here again and all this attention you're getting over the last couple of years here. Can you just talk about how you deal with that? How you kind of put it to the side and how you just have fun still? Play? Um, yeah, I just, like I said, I don't put much pressure on myself. I just go out there and have fun and see what happens. I mean, today was a, definitely a lot more relaxed situation than I'm used to, so um, not really preparation for today, but normal preparation, I guess, is just got to keep my head away from the noise and away from the media. Um, it felt great. Um, I'm glad that I felt like it was picture perfect, I guess, that the Delray native <laughs> gets to play uh, my University of Miami student. So uh, I was pretty local for both of us. And I'm glad it seemed like both, uh, both of us had fun and uh, her team was here. So that was pretty cool to see. I actually played on the UM courts um, for Orange Bowl. They have the semis and finals there. And I've been a UM fan for, for a long time. So um, when I found out that I was going to play her, it was pretty cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like people don't understand that it's a big deal. So, um, yeah, that's some. She's that's something I will never be able to do. Um, and I'm pretty. It was pretty cool to play her. And, and actually, I think it was a long three setter. Her final round match. Actually, I think I didn't watch the whole thing. But I think I saw the, the final set. And. Um, she fell to her knees, and that's kind of reminded me of that moment when I won my first uh, junior slam. And so, I'm, I mean, she has, she's going pro, so I'm sure I'm going to see her and probably play her in a, not an exhibition match where we're both a little bit more serious. But she was super sweet talking to her before the match, and um, she has the bright future. I mean, she's already doing well, so um, I'm sure I'm going to see her on tour probably next year. I think this is her senior year, so probably next year. You guys were joking out there, too. It's yeah. such a different, different atmosphere. Yeah. It's in a real match. Yeah. So what was that like to kind of be laughing going back? If yeah. Going yeah, definitely. That's why I like playing exhibition matches um, because I'm for sure thinking it um, in my head during an ma actual match, but obviously I can't say it because people would not laugh. They would think I'm crazy. So it's good to, I guess, get those jokes out because I'm a goofy person. I like to have fun. So and I'm, it, it sound, seemed like she was. We were all for it. So, yeah. So about the Australian Open and, mm -hmm. and the last couple grand slams you had, can you just talk about your growth as a Um, yeah, I mean, I've been practicing super hard. I feel like I'm definitely trusting my shots. My serve was pretty good today. I didn't even mean to hit some of those aces that I hit today. So um, that shows that I'm working, doing better on that. And yeah. When you look back at where you, like the Wimbledon and what kind of happened beyond then, looking at now, how do you look back at the year and how mm -hmm. your, um, that circuit kind of went and the debut and all the attention you've gotten and then mm -hmm. coming here playing home? Yeah, I was actually a little bit nervous for today just uh, because of the crowd. It, you know, you don't want to let the, your hometown down. It's definitely different. The, this is I played a couple exhibitions, but this one definitely uh, felt a lot different um, to my previous ones. And it was a lot more special just to see people that you know in the crowd. And a lot, like I said, a lot of people that never see me play and a lot of friends and family that never see me play got an opportunity to. So it was something that I was happy to do. It wasn't that long ago that maybe Venus and Serena were like role models for you. Yeah. You're only 15, and your mom even said it's kind of a balancing act. I mean, do you, do you look at yourself as a role model at this point, or how, mm -hmm. how do you approach? Because you got all these little kids looking up to you yeah. now. And um, I mean, I don't view myself as a role model. I guess I know that people look up to me, but um, I don't really view myself as a role model. But I know that I have to, I guess, act as one because I know people look up to me. Um, but I guess, like I said, I, I mean, I still look up to the Williams sisters and. Um, I mean, I don't know at one point they thought they were a role model or if they still don't think they're a role model. So I don't know when I will reach that point. But like I said, I just think I'm just living my life and I'm glad that 
um, it's positive and that parents and kids um, like me, especially the kids. I definitely is really weird. Um, it's actually one of the ball girls that were on my court today. I actually uh, used to train with her, <laughs> um, so it was pretty pretty funny. <laughs> Yeah. That, um, how do you kind of make sure that you're home, maybe mm -hmm. seeing friends, hang with your family, but also continue to train for pressure? Yeah, um, just having my normal schedule as I always do. During the week, I'm more serious training, and then weekends are pretty much free for whatever I want to do or going to games and stuff. I mean, my friends, they also play tennis, so they're pretty busy. I think we're all pretty busy, so it's about finding the right times. but. Um, yeah, definitely this weekend I have plans, and I think people think uh, I think people forget that I'm 15 sometimes, and I still have school and stuff to do. So I have a lot of fun, and I still do you know normal stuff, and I, I don't even know what normal is, but I, I still go shopping in the mall, and I still get in trouble and all that. Can you talk about how close you think you are to competing for a Grand Slam and being in a final, and, and what you need to do to get to that level? Um, yeah, my belief in every Grand Slam I've played so far is that I can win it. So I've been, I think I'm close, obviously. I lost to the defending champion twice. <laughs> At one moment, I lost to Simona, and then uh, Australia, I lost to Sonia. So I'm definitely close, and it's just giving, getting over that um, final hurdle. Just a couple more, please. And someone said that today in this game was a big push for women athletes and just being able to see you out there. Yeah. How does it make you feel that this is just another push towards women's success in sports? Yeah, I definitely. I think tennis, especially, we're especially tennis players that we're very lucky that first we have equal prize money. Not a lot of uh, other female athletes get that opportunity, and that we also have a pretty big, big flat platform. I'm sorry, I can't talk. We also have a pretty big platform. So um, I think I'm. I mean, especially as being a tennis player, I think we're really lucky that we had those pioneers fight. So I'm giving opportunities like this because not everyone, I mean, there's other athletes that are just as good, even better than I am in, I am in their respective sports and they don't, uh, I guess, get that much recognition. So I think we just have to continue to bring awareness to it. How hard is it to be a normal teenager? I mean, it can't be easy for you nowadays. Um, I mean, it's easy. <laughs> this, this is my life, so I don't, I mean, I think people forget, they kind of compare my life, I guess, to another 15 year old's life. But like, I don't know what that other person's life is. Everyone's life is different. So I feel like my life is normal for me. And I still feel like a normal 15 year old. I mean, I have friends, I do homework. I mean, I have a bedtime, I have curfew. And I, I mean, I'm doing everything that I feel like everyone else does. I mean, I went to homecoming and I'm gonna go to prom uh, probably next year um, or whenever that prom is. But I do normal stuff. So um, I'm actually planning my sweet 16 now. So I'm pretty a normal teenager. You have more spending money now. <laughs> yes, uh, I definitely do have more spending money, but I don't like spending money. But um, yeah, my brothers, t uh, especially Cody, he um, definitely recognized that part um, after Wimbledon. And he's um, asking him, the funny story is, uh, after Australia, I asked, always asked, bring souvenirs for them. And the youngest said he wanted like a necklace from Australia. And Cody, who's 12, he asked for 1% of my prize money. <laughs> <laughs> and um, for a 12 year old to say that, it was pretty. And he's, so he's definitely, I feel like he's definitely um, more looking at the paycheck than I am because I'm just out there to have fun and play tennis. <laughs> Thanks, Coco. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Coco.